Hey, what's up? This is Joe. I'm in uh, Jocotepec in the state of Jalisco. And uh, I wanted to make this video to share with you uh, a little breakdown that I had on my way to where I'm at right now. Basically, I got about 40 miles outside of Topeka on the highway when uh, my rear tire instantly lost all air. Uh, basically felt like I was riding on marbles. Fortunately, I was able to get the bike off to the shoulder of the road. So this video will show you everything that happened uh, uh, from that moment forward and basically how I got here. I'm gonna add the disclaimer that uh, although I would have liked to have uh, captured video of the, a lot of the stuff that uh, occurred, when you're in the heat of the moment, you know, it's like not the first thing on your mind. I've kind of done the best I can to uh, to use what footage I have and try to explain the rest of uh, what's going on through narration. So uh, I hope that uh, the end product is something that uh, is uh, enjoyable to watch. So this video will uh, will explain some of that, everything that happened from the blowout uh, forward. So I was really fortunate uh, in this situation that a lot of people helped me out along the way. One of which is uh, Scooter Champ Scotty, who a lot of you guys have probably heard of. He's got a very successful YouTube channel. I hope you guys enjoy uh, uh, this video of, of all of my pain and suffering. <laughs> It sucked, but it really wasn't that bad. If you enjoy this video, please hit like and subscribe. And as always, I've included an optional donate link in the drop box if you'd like to contribute to this project. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the road. It was all going so well. I was wandering my way through Mexico when my old mentor, Scooter Tramp Scotty, called me up to say he was down at the Roca Azul RV Park in Jalisco, where I was just about three weeks ago. Figuring on a nice warm ride through the agave fields, I headed in his direction. I noticed the ride was a little wobbly when I pulled out of Topeka, but hell, when you're carrying as much weight as I am, that's not unusual. Sometimes the load's just not balanced right. I'd gotten about 40 miles south of Topeka when all of a sudden my rear tire blew out. In one instant, it was as if I was riding on marbles. I put on my hazard lights and carefully guided the sluggish beast onto the shoulder of the highway. Well, I had a sudden blowout uh, on my way south to uh, Guadalajara. I finally found a level place to get it on the center stand, uh, relatively level. Fortunately, I carry some liquid dish soap uh, in my bike and uh, made some soapy water. I sat down in the dirt and applied soapy water to the tire, spinning the wheel until I found the hole. I was shocked at the sheer size of it and lack of any remnants of a screw or nail that would indicate the cause. How the hell did this happen? I got out my plug kit and guided the tire reamer into the puncture site gently, making sure to keep it at the same angle as the hole. The reamer went in easily. Too easily. It was going to be a damn miracle if I could get a plug to stay in this thing. Realizing in the back of my head I was pretty much screwed, no pun intended, I went through the motions of attempting the plug job. The diameter of the puncture was clearly too wide to accept the plug, so I tried a trick I'd heard about truckers using to repair large holes. I threaded two new plugs onto the inserter and hoped for the best. Well, at least one of the plugs was in there. How far I was going to make it like this was anybody's guess. I cut the tip of the plug off level with the tread and grabbed a can of fix a flat I had stashed in my bike. I really hate to use this stuff, but it's gotten me out of a jam on more than one occasion. With a bit of luck, it would seal any remaining space between the rubber and the plug. That was my hope, anyway. Amazingly, I had a cell signal out here, so I phoned my buddies in Lake Chapala to let them know the situation. I would try to fix a flat, ride super slow, and keep an eye on the pressure. I packed up the bike, applied the fix-a-flat, and started riding slowly on the shoulder of the road. After two miles, I stopped and found that the end of the plug, which I had so neatly trimmed off, was now protruding a quarter inch from the tread. At that point, I made the executive decision to see about a tow. 
All right, well, I was hoping that was gonna work. No dice, it keeps popping out uh, every time I stop and look at it. So it's just a matter of time before the whole thing blows out. Rather than that, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and see about a, a tow truck. I got Lily working on that. In the meantime, what else can you do but set up the chair around this spot in the shade? So everything tends to work itself out in these situations eventually. Uh, main thing I found is just stay relaxed. As soon as I sat down to relax in the shade, Jorge, my tow truck driver, showed up. Lily had done her work well. We pushed the loaded up ST onto the trailer and began cinching it down. For about 60 hours a week, he drives a route from Topeak to Guadalajara, picking up stranded bikers like me. We sat there chewing the fat like a couple of good old boys all the way to Guadalajara, about two hours away. Agua termales? Mucho. Si? ¿Sí? Mucho, mucho. Mm. Bosque de la primavera. Okay. Jorge is telling me about a camping place outside of Guadalajara next to a hot spring. Although he works long hours in his truck, he likes to take his family camping there when he can. Security, policy, totalmente bien. No, mira, de hecho, aquí está. Once we got to the city, Jorge took me to a tire guy he knew. After seeing the bike, he said he really didn't recommend a patch job due to the large amount of weight and high speeds I'd be riding, but that it might work as a temporary fix. Knowing the huge amount of cobblestone roads I'd be riding, as well as the sketchy cell service on the way to Hakotepec, I asked Jorge if he had a buddy who could tow me down there as it was off his route. During the course of loading this motorcycle, both me and the bike damn near fell three feet onto the pavement. But fortunately, Jorge had my nine o'clock. He and his buddy guided the bike up the steep ramp while I pushed. It was a Herculean effort, but we got it done. We said goodbye to Jorge and began the journey to Jocotepec. Okay, so we had another tow truck on the way to uh, Jocotepec. Bike back there. My new driver asked if I was hungry, so we swung by a pizza joint and headed down the cobblestone. I offered to pay and he insisted it was his treat. I was really stressing about how the two of us were going to unload the nearly 800 pound bike without a ramp. Luckily when we showed up at the park I ran into Scott, another biker whom I'd met last time, who had just so happened had several sons about high school age. After we found a sturdy enough board, five of us unloaded the ST with no problem. All right, so finally in uh, Jocotepec, got a gigantic hole in my rear tire, as you saw. So I had to get a tow uh, all the way here. Scooter Champ Scotty is uh, over that way, uh, camped out, and presumably he's going to help me. He might not know it, but he's going to help. The next day, I started calling all the tire dealers in Guadalajara. Problem was, I had an unusual size, and over the phone, I was quickly exhausting the limits of my Spanish. It's one thing to have a conversation in another language in person, but quite another when you're trying to communicate complex ideas over a spotty phone connection. For hours I called around and waited for responses. Ah, look what we have here. What are you doing, buddy? Caught him in his natural habitat. The ever elusive Oops. scooter tramp. That was, I just fucked that up. Oh no, I didn't. But I've been helped out so many different ways from Sunday on the road. There's no way. It's, it's an old writ, unwritten law that everybody knew. If you didn't leave anybody on the road, if there was anything you could do to help them. I think I told you I had an old guy on a gold wing one time try to help me, and there was nothing he could do. And he, where we, I was in a gas station. He said, well, I'm going to get him to make us a fresh pot of coffee, and we're going to sit down. Yeah, he hung with me the whole time. I had some friends, had a truck. It was actually in Spearfish. You know, my mother told me that the 50s were the best years, and when I asked her why, she said because it was an innocent time when people helped each other out. Still waiting to hear back from a half a dozen vendors in Guadalajara, I figured I'd do what I could and go ahead and remove the wheel. Prior to today, I'd been way too preoccupied to do much filming, but now the both of us were milking the crappy situation for all it was worth. I had other plans, but no. It's all right, man. I've been in his shoes so many times I can't even remember. When you're drifting and your motorcycle quits, your whole, your whole fucking world stops. Everything stops, man. And all I ever do is spend all my time trying to get it running again. 
So I get it. That's what we're gonna do. Well, I'm gonna try to let you get in the grease as much as I can. Oh, you lazy bum. Yeah, whatever. I don't have whatever I cannot get involved in here. We got a board underneath the center stand. I don't know if you guys can see that. You ever use these? Yeah, I have some. I actually bought those, man. Yeah, they're good, man. See a thin socket. Oh. Yeah, I keep uh, exactly the tools I know I'm gonna need, nothing else. Yeah, thank you. Now pull the wheel towards you and it should just drop out. It will just drop out. So that's that. What next? I don't know. Next, I received a call from a large tire warehouse informing me that they had my size in a Slovakian made sport tire. Perfect. I don't know if I trust you on this thing. Well, you got no choice, bro. This is what I've been reduced to. Somewhere in my life, things took a wrong turn, and this is where I ended up. I took a course, uh, or at least I lied about taking the course, and I read a book about how to ride a motorcycle. And you just got like stop, right? <laughs> Where's, well, there's, it, it, it's got ways to stop it, and it needs to make it go. And, and then gears and shit. Oh yeah, that too. You gotta fucking switch gears or something. I've heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you reminded me. So I'm keeping about a six inch uh, gap in between. Oh, I don't want to get turned on, huh? There's <laughs> my camp over there. Yanta. You can hit this at an angle, it's a little easier. Scotty and I headed up to the big city on the rickety old electric glide. I could tell it was an inconvenience for him, but as he explained earlier, he felt he still lived by an unwritten biker code from long ago in which if someone needed help, you helped them. Not for cobblestone. Harley's never had good suspension. For a first timer, he handled the bike rather well, so we headed through the mountains to Guadalajara. It works fine, but not on these big ass Right. So, if they're going to move within those three inches, when you hit something hard, you're going to bottom out. Right. So, the boat switch, all it does is it's a vacuum advance, which they use for many years on cars during the days of carburetors. It's a stupid little part. It's got a hose that hooks into your intake manifold. When you close your butterfly, it creates vacuum and it switches it. Then when you open your butterfly, the vacuum drops it and it unswitches it underground the wire. After about an hour and a half of BSing, we arrived at the warehouse. This was more motorcycle tires than I'd ever seen under one roof. No wonder they had my size. You sure you know what you're doing there? Actually, I don't. It's my first time, bro. So I think we'll probably be okay. This fucker's on there now. Yeah, that's all right. And then, because it's in here, so the side to side it's is good. It's riding on the, it's riding yeah. on that. Right, you got the rack in the middle. That's not bad for a first timer. With the tire secure, we headed back. Being the nice guy that I am, I figured the least I could do was buy Scotty some lunch. So when we passed a restaurant with a bunch of delicious looking meat smoking over the fire, I suggested we stop. So it just came out with the book, huh? It's called Josie's Journey. Unfortunately, I had to publish it on Amazon. Yeah, he doesn't like Amazon. I didn't have a choice. If I get one in the future, I will move, put it, publish it somewhere else. It's crossing the back road to Kansas after sleeping in this abandoned place that, not that night that had no wall on it. It was a great place to be. And I'm riding down the road and all of a sudden the ideas hit me. Start falling on me like bricks on my head, man. What was going to happen in the different chapters, names of the characters, names of the book, just start falling on me, man. I was going to Denver and I camped under this big bridge and I pounded on my computer keys for three days solid. And, I, and when I got off work, I'd have to go to a coffee shop and I'd have to keep a pen close because the ideas were coming so fast. Then I became afraid, is my writing good enough? I've never had nothing come up with nothing like that before. One guy sent me a message. He said, uh, he said, Scotty, he said, I, 
He said, I don't read much. He said, but I would if the books were all like this one. And he said, I can't wait to get home every night to read it. So that's good. So let's hope. I never know what the public's going to think. So far, my reviews have been good, but it's a story that I've never seen told before. That's what the editor said, too. He said, I've never seen this story told before. Costillas de Borrego, which is sheep's rib, rabbit, guacamole, which is delicious. This place is absolutely awesome. They're out there cooking everything on the wood fire. You got the smell of the smoke uh, coming in here, wafting in. Uh, very rustic. Gracias. Next step was finding someone near enough to the camp to actually change the tire. Neither one of us was too keen on lugging around the wheel any longer than absolutely necessary. We found a guy who said no problem, but we were skeptical and preparing to do it ourselves. Regardless, we dropped off the tire and returned 20 minutes later with the wheel. What proceeded to take place in the next five minutes was one of the most virtuosic displays of the tire arts either one of us had ever seen. That's great. <laughs> we watched as the master broke the bead, removed the tire, wiped away the fix a flat and mounted the new tire by hand. From start to finish, he completed the whole process about 20 times faster than Scotty and I could have ever managed. I missed it, how he broke the bead. It was good though. Tiene que ah, sí, sí, sí. sí, lo siento. Lo siento. Gracias. Jesus Christ, this guy's crazy. Yeah. 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 Fucking <laughs> shit, dude. Mucho machismo. Oh. <laughs> 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 Hi, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee. <laughs> I might add this guy is using a grand total of one, count it, one tire spoon for this mount job. I've reluctantly been in his shoes a couple of times with the mag wheel and needed a minimum of three spoons to do the job. I'm not a real mechanic. Say yo, say yo. I'm not a real mechanic, that's why, bro. That's it. Oh, man. Need some air and it's all good. Oh. <laughs> the what? Listo. Okay, gracias, amigo. I'll tell you, there's something about them being low to the ground like they are. You feel like you're closer to the, connected to the road. Scotty pointed out that I probably still owed him a coffee, so we grabbed the wheel and headed downtown. When we got there, we found the whole place transformed. The site of an enormous fair complete with rides, delicious looking sweets, and vendors of all kinds. It's for the okay, you know, for okay, her business, okay. yeah. Gracias. Right there. Yeah. None of this was out here. You know, the entire. You're not gonna be able to use that footage because they're gonna de demonetize you. Oh, for the music? Yeah. It doesn't seem like, but I love this town, man. It's one of my favorite. Oh, my lady's closed. Vamos por allá. Bumper cars. Yeah. Big ass. I'm older than you, bro. I was around when we were more like it is here, you know? We were more like this up there. I was born in 60, man. I was a teenager through the 70s. You know, I have memories through the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember when we were free and when the cops told you to go home, you're drunk, you know? Right. You don't go home. Right. And... La banda. Look at all this delicious stuff. I can't eat. Por nada. So we just got the tire, the guy put it on in about five seconds, about five minutes of tire change. And uh, so I'm looking cool with my new uh, awesome uh, design shirt. And uh, we're gonna sit down here and drink some coffee. All right, let's see if we can do this, huh? <laughs> we'll get it. No problem, no problem. Okay, which way are we going? Okay. What he said. Yeah. Yup, he said that's yeah, how shit. it happened. We'll go around. We can go around. Can we go underneath? Yeah, you're gonna, we're gonna lift that thing up. We'll ride right oh, under it. Oh, shit. Whoa. Jerking me around, dude. You're a Which All way? good. Left. The nice
nice thing about Mexico, you could just go. Oh yeah. Cutting down some bamboo, it looks like. Cane. Nothing wrong with the kid on the side of the road with machete. It's a work tool. Yeah, it freaked me out. First times I came down here, everybody had them. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And then I realized it's their main, it was their main tool. They used it for everything. I thought that was, I never thought of it that way. But I'd seen it. I went from being stranded in the middle of nowhere to reinstalling my wheel in about 48 hours. The challenge of breaking down in Mexico is always finding the right parts and dealing with the language barrier. I'd frankly expected to be without wheels for a much longer period of time, but I was extremely relieved that it didn't come to that. Yeah, you ain't gonna get around that. It's going in. Generally, I have to get from this side where I'm sitting, uh, and then hold it on, but with both sides on each side, you know? Yeah, like that. You have to do that. And the rest is self-explanatory, man. Okay, there you go. Should just hang there now. Right. You can work the axle in and put the rest together after. Just bolt everything back up and drop yeah. it on the ground, and you're a happy guy. All right. Wheels in place, the rest is just bolting stuff back together. Down here, in the, in the dirt, what are we, six or seven miles, six or seven hundred miles south of the border, I'd say. And you got a bunch of gringos, looks like we've got a few new ones that came in. Sure. Which one there, Junior? I'm gonna go get myself a shower. I think you're good to go okay. here, huh? Yep, yep, good. Thank you for, thanks for all the help, man. Sure, man. The biker code of helping one another out dates from decades ago, back when no one had a cell phone and everyone wrenched on their own bikes. It's an unwritten rule that when you can help, you do, because you never know when it might be you in the same situation. Nowadays, most people probably figure you've got a cell phone, but if you're lucky as I've been, you might just meet a few of these characters on the road. All right, so what you got? Well, the, the ones that I started writing down was over here, here have lunch. Almarzo. Almarzo. Uh -huh. That's is when I started learning about these. Okay, so what you'll do when you write these conjugations out is you'll try to make that, make a sentence in your head. It's easier to get it to stick in your head if you have to practice to make it into a sentence yourself rather than read it out of a book. And you have to say, When's a, a time when I would ever say to learn? Well, one way would be, I want to learn. I want to learn Spanish. How would I say that? Well, we know, yo is me, I. Quiero aprender, no? Quiero. It's aprender because it's I want to learn. 